Hi, I'm Rick, Cooking with Rick. Uh, today I'm going to do a session on uh, meatloaf. Meatloaf, everybody knows about meatloaf. Uh, and and what, what do you mean? The Italians can't do meatloaf? Of course we can. We make meatballs. Uh, I learned this recipe from my Aunt Anna. I call her my cool aunt. <laughs> she really had it together. Anyway, uh, she was a good cook. I mean, I, I think if you want to cook, you should latch on to people who are uh, who are good cooks and watch them you know uh, a lot of them don't know like for the training you know the, the recipes or what you have to put it down exactly what you have to do these are people who who just can do it uh, uh, I think the secret too is taste if you have good taste uh, you can it helps you know the story follow the recipe to the T and then add it and subtract well actually uh, what I've done is I have this meatloaf mix, which you can buy at uh, any supermarket. It's, it's ground veal, ground pork, and ground beef. And I usually throw in an extra pound of uh, beef in there. You want to put in here uh, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and uh, Italian seasoning. I've already started that by doing that. And then what we want to do is we want to put some celery in here. Now, celery is, is, you know, is good, but what I like on celery, I like the leaf, so, you know, just chop it away. You want, you want the celery in here to chop it up, to give it a, a little different flavor. Well, actually, you could probably do parsley in it. The same. I think parsley and celery almost taste alike, uh, although that could be debatable, you know. All right, so what I'm doing is just chopping this up um, to try to get, you know, it looking good, right? What I do um, is also add uh, some carrots. So we'll, we'll throw in some carrots in here and uh, that'll help out, you know. I think one of the biggest influences in my life in cooking had been Julia Childs. And I picked up this book, um, it's called Julia's Kitchen. Now, it's been out for a couple of years now, but it's, it's Julia Childs uh, breaking up some asparagus. You know asparagus, you can just take it like this and hold it and bend it and it cracks where it's, the soft spot is and that's how, you, that's how they do it. And on the cover you see that. And then you can see all the different pots and pans that she has. I mean, and she has them all over the wall. If you've seen that movie, uh, Julie and Julia, you'll see in there her husband drawing circles around all these different pans with a marker so she knows where to put them. But she was a believer in copper pots. Um, well, okay, um, I like cast iron. I mean, you know, you like what you like. But this is a, a fun book. Uh, and like she says, uh, any kind of major decision you want to make, do it in the kitchen. And she would invite people over to the house, to a home, and she would have like these parties and she'd have them helping and cook. And that's my belief. You want people to get involved and you want to make cooking fun. Um, you do that, you got it good. You got it working. All righty. So, um, I don't know. If you're a, a book collector of f foods, of different recipes, Get this, it really doesn't have much of a recipe, but it has stories about her. And to this architect, she told him how to design uh, what she felt should be in the kitchen and whatnot. That's a fun book, a uh, little enjoyable. People don't do enough of the, the reading, I think. Um, I think everything's done, reading's done on the internet or on the iPhone, the iPad, and you know. Uh, today I'm doing this in, in, in my kitchen, and we have some people supposedly calling and it's important, so I can't disconnect the phone. So I'm gonna go through this and see if the phone rings. You know, usually you get, a, you got, I got this noble Romo, <laughs> who it stops the phones, you know, you get one call and it just, you know, and it's supposed to block them. Well, uh, you know, you get one ring. It's actually, that's what it is. You get one ring and then they sort of block it. Well, we'll see. Um, maybe I'll get, some, I'll get some interruptions, but whatever. Um, meatloaf. Back to the meatloaf. Okay, so we, we have this in here, right? So we want to throw in some eggs. 
Uh, we crack some eggs and put some eggs in there, and and some and cheese. salt, pepper, garlic powder, some uh, Italian seasoning, and uh, uh, chopped up some parsley. What I'm going to do now is uh, I got an onion, and I think I'll just grate it. You don't want to do all of it, so we just grate that. And the chunks that you get, the take it and throw it in. I'm going to put it in one of these pans and throw it in the, in the pan there. Then you can just rub the bottom of the pan with the oil so you get more of an onion flavor too, all right? So carrot, and I'm not skinning the carrot. You can if you want, but you know, you, you want some of the carrot in there, right? And then you switch it the other way and get some of the, like the, like, so you'll see pieces of carrot in it, all right? And just, should have a good cheese grater. I mean, that's, I mean, there are some that are electrics that they make, but I don't know. I don't know if you got the control you have when you do it this way, all right? So, what we're doing is, all right. Then, I got some parsley, all right? Uh, I have the scissor. I just chop it up. What else would we want to put in there? We want to put in, haha, my favorite cheese, Pecorino Romano, all right? All right, so that's just, you know what? Freestyle, there you go. Let's draw a little more in. Okay, so we got the cheese in there, right? And let's see what else they need. Oh, they're gonna have to put the eggs. All right, so, what the heck, I bought it. So let's show them in there. Oh, that's two, all right? I don't know if I need three, but we'll find out as we go. And then I have some breadcrumbs, which I'll I'll add when you, as you mix it, it's, it's kind of like watery and you want it to, to uh, get a little bit more full, so you add some of the uh, breadcrumbs. I pick up this breadcrumb, it's uh, in Arthur Avenue in the Bronx. You know, uh, authentic coal-fired brick oven baking. I don't know, it's, uh, it won an award, so it must be good. All right, we'll see. Okay, uh, I pretty much ground up all the, um, the carrots. Uh, you know, I grated the carrots. I grated the, uh, uh, finished uh, grating the onion. Uh, you got a look like this here. Actually, I can probably show you over here uh, what it looks like. So that's, that's pretty well done. And now we want to throw some garlic in here. Um, you know, I got a little garlic press. I put some garlic in here. And you just want to squeeze it and just get it going. Squeeze it and get the garlic in there. Nothing like fresh garlic. Remember, get the garlic that's loose. Uh, if you look on my Facebook page, you'll see what I, what I, what I, was, what I recommended. Rather than get that one that's in a, uh, a knit bag. I mean, you don't, you don't want that. So, okay, let's just take this, uh, whatever's left of that, and just pull that out. You know, sometimes I'll take it and rub it in there, but I don't think so. I don't think I need to do it. Uh, probably just do two garlics. I think that makes more sense. There we go. Start mixing this. Uh, we have some eggs. We put two. I put two eggs in here and just start mixing it up. Now comes an interesting part. As you mix it, you see, well, I might need another egg. Um, yeah, I think so. I think it's uh, probably be better if I put another egg in here. So, hey, I got another egg. Got right, one hand. Wow, Rick, what a mess you made of that, right? <laughs> oh, anything. Okay. All right, let's just mix it up. Now it's looking better, huh? Yeah, I like that now. So, what a lot of people do is they'll all add bread to it. You know, they'll take some bread and they'll run it under the sink to get it soft and put it in here. I, I'm gonna add this breadcrumbs. These breadcrumbs from Arthur Avenue. And they're plain. You, you remember, if you get breadcrumbs, always get plain, all right? I mean, why do you wanna get it seasoned? I mean, you're, you're, you're cooking, so you, you add your seasoning, right? You don't have to have somebody else put the seasoning in there for you, all right? 
So as we're turning this now, it's, you see it's getting, working out pretty good. The next part is the interesting part. You, you want to do it with your hand, but you really, it's not like meatballs. You don't want to overwork it. Uh, you want to just get it, you know, so, all right, so here we go. So first thing I want to do is roll up the sleeve here, and we use the one hand in case the phone rings. It might ring. Yeah, there you go. Because uh, it's not disconnected. <laughs> I did a video the other day, and I disconnected. I couldn't find out how to disconnect my daughter's phone, and I disconnected it, and then I put it back, and she said, you know, you put it back wrong. She said, three days I didn't get any phone calls. I wonder what was going on. <laughs> I said, all right. I said, but, you know, I, I said, I, never, I wouldn't admit to it, but <laughs> it's already on video. I said it, so, all right. So, she got it. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of looking nice, right? There you go. You want to make sure you get it all mixed. What we're going to do is going to be different than. Although we're going to make a layer of ricotta cheese. And. You Uh, I do have here a jar of uh, zero tomato puree. Uh, I'm going to drop a little bit of, of tomatoes in there. You know, I love this pot because you just, listen, it stops. No double layers, no, you know, sealed pack. And I'm not putting a lot. I'm just putting a little bit. Okay? That's it. We don't, uh, but you need some tomato flavor in there. All right? And just... See, I and you can throw it back in the refrigerator. Uh, so let's mix this up a little bit. You don't want to put too much tomatoes in there. Then you can get a bit uh, over flavor, is it? Is that such a word? Yeah. It's pan. So I put some oil in there. I'll throw a little bit more oil on the bottom. We don't really want it to stick too well on the bottom. You can do it like a flat plant, you know, a mound. But I'm doing it this way, so first thing we want to do is uh, set it on the bottom. This is almost like doing uh, lasagna. Well, you know, I don't know if it's like lasagna. But what you want to do is you want to layer it. So we put this here. Now, that's this. Get the regular ricotta cheese don't get the skim i mean why would you you know i mean why would you cut then you know put some of that ricotta in here all right all right so we got it in right now let's just flatten it out and you don't want to make it thin you want to have like a layer you know it's got to be you know All right, let's put a little more in here. That's it. And I'll put this away. All right. Now you can add some pecorino romano there, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I will. But I got. I'll go right in here with this same hand. You know. Again, uh, what I said. Just when you make stuff like this, watch people who do it, and you know, just. I mean, you gotta, you know, you can't watch them one time. You gotta watch them a bunch of times uh, because it, it's, it, so you can learn it. And you wanna learn it that you don't have to stop and read the directions on how to do it. When you cook something, it's, it's better that you cook it with a flow rather than you stop and think about, uh, well, I gotta add this, I gotta add that. The first time you do it, that's okay. But the next couple of times, you gotta, you know, you, you gotta do your own feel, right? Cheese on this if you want to. Maybe I'll just sprinkle a little bit of cheese, not a lot, and uh, cover it again. Cover it with the uh, aluminum foil, the, uh, the what do you call it? The, the dull side down. Always try to put the dull side next to whatever you're uh, you're cooking. All right. Okay. Now 
like I said, the, the dull side against what's being cooked. Okay, what we're going to do is place it inside the oven, cook it at 350 degrees, and remove the aluminum foil in a half hour, and then we'll check it for 25 minutes, and the temperature should be about 160, and then it should be ready to go. It's at 160, so let's get it out. I let it sit for a while, and, it, you know, don't think I'm a, a hero. My hands are... Uh, <laughs> Not that cool, all right? I mean, normally I use a, a pot holder to hold it. All right, so we have it setting here. Uh, what we might want to do is we want to try some. Ah, I just cut a little piece here. Now you're going to let this sit at least a couple of hours, and then it really pulls together. So I'm going to take it, put it here. We got some of that ricotta cheese with it, all right? Looking good. Then you take it out and you put it on a plate and you, you know. But let's just try a little. Great. Terrific. Now, oh yeah, turn out well. Good job, Rick. Anyway, uh, again, uh, thanks for watching. 